Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I am here and I'm honored to be with Kevin Waldron. And if, if you don't know Kevin, in 1989, he was struggling to grow a fledgling disaster restoration company on a shoestring budget. No, So if you have excuses for one, no college degree, no real business experience, just had a hunger to build a business and, and he's stubborn, right? Uh, I, I would say, um, and in a good way. And he grew his company um, to a regional powerhouse with five offices, over 200 employees, $24 million a year. Fast forward, he sold his company to a national franchise and after a few years uh, is pursuing new ventures and he's helping other people. And so I wanted him to share his expertise and I love some of the concepts he talks about. And one of them, Kevin, is, first of all, thanks for joining me and doing this. Pleasure. Um, one of them is self-made man, don't make me laugh. And I wanted you to speak a little bit about that and your thoughts on that and then how Margaret plays a role in this. Yeah, no, I'm happy to. Um, it's just that anybody that's ever built a successful business, um, know this thing about self-made man or self-made woman or self-made entrepreneur, um, I've always just found it to be really ridiculous. I mean, it has an implication that we somehow did it alone and we pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps. And while, you know, we, we all probably worked hard to build our businesses, there was there's always been somebody at key junctures that has given us a leg up. And they tend to get forgotten about sometimes as you, you know, get all your accolades for all the, all the stuff that you do as a business person. Um, and for me, one of the key people, and I thought about her uh, last week just because she's, she's sick, is my Aunt Margaret. And she was a, a Scottish woman who came out in the 1960s to California. She was an au pair. Um, and she was actually the person that was responsible for me coming to the States. Mm. Um, so she sponsored me to come on a student visa uh, in 1985, which is how I actually got here. So once my student visa was up and I decided to stay, um, so I she's walked essentially for, taking responsibility for you by sponsoring you, right? I mean, that I don't, is, I don't know about taking responsibility, but just you, you have to have a sponsor in the country to let you come in right. to get to get the visa. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I went to college for a year, and then I I worked for somebody and went out on my own. And then when I went out on my own, um, there's that myth that well, first of all, there's the myth that you have to have a ton of money to start a business. I don't think you do. I didn't. Um, I had just enough to get going. Um, but what I had to get going was just a little bit of savings that I had. And then she loaned me, I think it was 1500 bucks, the first 1500 bucks mm. uh, to get my first paid, my, to pay my first month's rent to get up and running. Um, and it, if she hadn't have done that, I don't know if I'd have been able to start my business and then just took it off from there. Yeah. So, I mean, does that make sense? Totally. And then there was, in diff, like you said, different people enter in different stages. So she helped you get, first of all, get to the country. Second of all, give yeah. you some seed money to start your business. And then yeah. Jerry Griffin entered your life. So Jerry was, uh, um, as I was working for somebody else and sort of learning the ropes, um, you know, you do good work, you help people, you provide value. And I did, definitely didn't want to take any contracts with me when I left my employer. But Jeremy, when, I mean, uh, Jerry, when he heard I was leaving, said, all right, you, we want you to do our contract. We, we'll, you're the only one that's ever taken care of us. We want you to do our work. Mm. Um, and that was instrumental, one, because it was a nice piece of business for me to start. And two, we were tiny, and they paid their bills literally every Friday. And when you start a business, you can't afford big, long, lengthy receivables times and wait for your money to come in. Mm. So... That really had the cash flow that came in that paid my bills, fed my family, um, and then allowed us to just keep jumping up. Yeah. I mean, he took a chance on you in a sense. I mean, you did the work, but he knew you were starting out in smaller, and there's always a risk, you know, when you give your business <laughs> totally. something like that. Yeah. And I, and I think I said that he didn't necessarily take a chance on my company because there wasn't one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the beginning, it was just me and a couple of guys. Yeah. Uh, he took a chance on me as a person. Um and if you've ever been in the spot where you've either been a beneficiary of that or you've done that for somebody else, it's an incredibly, it's an incredibly special feeling when it happens. And then you feel not obligated, but boy, did I deliver on that on, yeah. on that contract. Yeah. And it seemed like the contract, when we say contract, people may envision certain things. 
It's not like he's giving you keys to an office and you're sitting there in a posh office. It sounded like you're doing stuff at like two a.m. What, what were you? What dude, were you? Dude, it was construction work. It was we yeah. did disaster restoration. So when buildings yeah. get flooded, uh, yeah, he's calling you up at two o'clock in the morning saying, "Get your butt over here and you know <laughs> take care of this broken pipe that just flooded my my condo complex." Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, it definitely wasn't fancy. Um, and then there was another person, uh, Jay Slattery. Yeah, Jay was great. Jay was. Um, Jay was really meaningful, and I, 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 in San Francisco, there's a place called Union Square, right? It's like one of the biggest shopping districts and in, in probably in the country. Um, when you first start a business, you don't know anybody. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes, and I was. So I would walk door to door and go into all the big office buildings and all the hotels and, and try and solicit business. And I remember walking into Jay's hotel um, and – I'm sure I didn't look like a hang dog. Would you please give me business? Uh, but I'm sure there was some element to like, who's this guy coming in just asking, hey, do you have anything for us to take a look at? And he said, yeah, you can you can clean the lobby carpets. Uh, but they, talking at 2 a.m., they had to be done at 2 a.m. on a Saturday when all the guests had gone to bed and the mm. restaurant was closed. Um, and I was just, I was thrilled to do it because, you know, we didn't have any business when we started. And then we, the good thing with Jay was um, – he took a chance on us. We could have screwed the job up, messed his carpets up. But once we did a good job, um, we continued to do work for the hotel. And then as he moved around the restaurant business, moving from hotel to hotel, he took us with us for the next 10 years. Um, and I can't count the amount of money, but I'll bet you I did three, dollars $400,000 worth of business with Jay over the years mm. and was incredibly grateful. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Um you know, when I get your emails and that one, self-made man, don't make me laugh. And I love hearing your stories. And, and you're someone who you're not about great. This sounds great. You're about what are you going to do? Yeah. Take action on it. Right. So yeah. the challenge that you propose to people, I'd like for you to talk a little bit about. Now you've heard this. What should people do? Yeah. What are you going to do? And it, it's funny you mentioned the emails because that's one of the things that at the end of every me- email, there's usually a good story in there or some sort of lesson or whatever. But at the end of every email, it's like, well, what's, what's the challenge for you? What are you going to do? And the challenge for this particular one is really simple. Think back through the arc of your business life and whatever success you've been able to achieve, whether it seems like a tiny amount or a giant amount, um, look at, pick a few key people that really were the ones that helped mm-hmm. you or gave you a leg up um, and call them up and tell them what, that specific act that they did for you tell it what it meant tell them what it meant to you yeah um and there's a great quote i love i think it was samuel goldwin the movie guy um that said when somebody does something uh cool um applaud them because you'll make two people happy Hmm. so when you when, when i've ever called anybody up to thank them for something that they've done for me you can see the appreciation that they have that somebody would call them up to tell them but man i feel like a million bucks when i get off the phone too yeah, it's something when I read your email like that, it's um, we have to, we you know, just being grateful. The act of being grateful for yeah. things um, fills us up and it fills them up too. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, so, Kevin, where can people find out more? Where should we point them to on the web to hear more of, of you, to subscribe to the email? Where should uh, they easiest, go? easiest thing to do, Jeremy, go to the web, go to waldronleadership.com. Uh, you see oh, there's a whole bunch of articles on the website and then there's a sign up spot mm-hmm. uh, to get that weekly newsletter that comes out on a Sunday. Best thing you could do, in my opinion, waldronleadership.com. Thank you. Thanks, man.